Welcome. My name is Yogi Schultz, and I hope that you'll acquire lots of information and ideas for increasing the value of data analytics, and that can deliver that value to your current role and for your organization more generally. Just so you know who I am, I founded Corvell Consulting a couple decades ago, and we're in the information technology related management consulting business. We've delivered uh, many project management systems development assignments for our clients. And of course, in recent years, like for many other people, these uh, assignments have involved uh, data analytics. I write columns for IT World Canada, and I typically write to an IT executive audience. So before we start, we just should deal with a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, just to run down the team's controls, you can see on the left here, you can show the list of participants. You can show the conversation that can go on concurrently with uh, uh, among the participants. And if you have a, uh, a concern or a question, either way, Mark will be monitoring that conversation and uh, will respond in that manner. And if there is something you want to uh, Provide a gesture towards, that's of course great. And you can use the hand up uh, symbol if you want to uh, uh, get my attention and have me stop for a minute and respond to a question that you might want to ask. And there you can see the highlighting of the raise hand symbol of how that works. We won't be having any polls today, but that's the symbol for polls, the more actions symbols there's a bunch of things there mostly it's about your device settings that uh, uh, you might want to uh, revise during the course of the day but i suspect you should not have to go there the video of course if you want to turn on or off your video that's that symbol turn on and off your microphone is that particular symbol and this is a the icon that I use to share the presentation that you're seeing. I suspect you won't need to do anything about that today. So here's the uh, three topics that I'm going to handle in our discussion here today. We're going to start by talking about the uh, business benefits of data analytics. We'll discuss the benefits that are creating all the interest in data analytics. We'll also talk about how to describe these benefits. And then we're going to spend some time on the technical concepts associated with data analytics. Now, on the one hand, this webinar isn't intended to delve deeply into the technology that underlies data analytics. There are some concepts that I think we should all be familiar with, and I'll be discussing those with everyone. And the last segment of our discussion today is just how do you create powerful data visualizations that support data, good superior data decision making. We'll devote quite a bit of time to this, and so that'll help you tell your story in a way that will resonate with your audience and result in adoption of your recommendations. So how does this outline sound? These are the uh, topics that I hope you're here to discuss together. Okay. Oh, um, good. Um, Mark, are you trying to say something or Steve's trying to say something? No, I just said sounds good. Okay, so just so you know, there's session two of this is uh, scheduled for next Tuesday morning. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that comment, Steve. So these are the three topics we'll handle next Tuesday morning, same time, same place. How do you select the software? How do you get approval for your projects? And how do you successfully implement projects for data analytics? So you're welcome to uh, share the invitation with your friends. If you want to just introduce yourself for a minute, I, we haven't talked in quite a while and Mark doesn't know you, so. Oh, uh, well, Steve Rucheski, uh, my uh, company is SI Integrations, and I do uh, 
data system integrations for primarily oil and gas companies, uh, reporting and uh, project management. Excellent. And, Thank uh, you for and, I, and I'm here to just see glean glean some more information from my uh, friend Yogi. So did we lose Steve there or what happened? No, you went, you went quiet, Yogi. Um, so can you can you hear me well? Yeah, Yogi, I'm just wondering if, if uh, you should shut your video off. We if uh, that will help with the. All right, are you experiencing that, Steve? Are you are you having the audio and breaking up? Uh, he's breaking up a little bit. Uh, I can hear you perfectly fine. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. How's so, this? I don't know if. Yeah, there's there's a few things yep. in this infrastructure that we have no control over, <laughs> like bandwidth. <laughs> okay, can both of you gentlemen hear me well? Yes, I can hear Yes, you. yes. OK, well, thank you for the introduction, uh, Steve. Let's uh, move on from there. You didn't hear your favorite ice cream flavor, though. Oh, chocolate. Thank oh, you. sounds yummy. That's great. OK, so here's some learning objectives that we want to cover in our time together today. We want to differentiate the terminology related to data analytics. Um, there's the phrase data analytics, of course, predictive analytics. Uh, so we want to discuss how what the differences are among these various terms. Then I want to talk about some data sources that will be useful in many organizations. We'll spend some time on how to create superior charts and reports for your organization, and we'll describe business situations where data analytics uh, can deliver value. And in the remaining, in two, next Tuesday session, we'll discuss the bottom two uh, objectives. So why are we talking about this? What is it that causes people to have an interest in this topic? Well, as you can see from this chart, You'll see a lot of charts today. The value, you can see this is a substantial marketplace, and perhaps that's the best way to measure this. And it, it's indicative of the number of organizations that are adopting data analytics and trying to build value from that data analytics. And this billion dollar market is going to continue to grow. So, the underpinnings of all of this is that data analytics enables the data-driven organization. So we're going to improve the quality of business decisions through this, and we're going to reduce the risk of poor business killing decisions. Now, believe it or not, there really are, those really do go on because what are they caused by? Simply following the views of the loudest, most charismatic, or most dynamic person in the room, inadequate data quality, lack of data integration in the company systems, use of inadequate analytic tools, or relying solely on Excel, over-reliance on historical anecdotes from operations, relying largely on the person with the most seniority or experience, over-reliance on a valued consultant or executive mentor, taking the path of least resistance based on tradition, cautiously following industry trends. So that's quite a list, and many organizations suffer from one or more of the items on this list. So I would invite you to read the article that I've written on this subject of data-driven companies. It's part of your webinar material. You can download it from there. It'll help you self-assess how data-driven your organization is, and you can easily identify specific opportunities to improve data 
driven decision making for your organization. So how do they do it in Calvin's land? Well, I think we have enough analytic information, don't you? All we have is one alternative fact that you made up. That's plenty. By the time we add an introduction, a few illustrations and a conclusion, it'll look like a management report. Well, we all know that this report is unsuccessful or not it's unsuccessful. Certainly, it's also unacceptable. Today, we want to spend our time building a better understanding of data analytics to improve your effectiveness and likely your career as a data analyst. If you have a management role, you can provide you with some ideas about where to apply data analytics for business benefit in your organization. OK, so that this is a slide reminding us of next week's session. And that's the end of the introductory presentation. Let me just spend a minute and switch to the next one. Now, some of the audio from your side. Uh, are you seeing the slides now? Yes. The analytic benefit? Yeah, all good, Yogi. Great. Okay, so this is the. Uh, that was the introduction, and here's the first segment. So we're going to focus here business benefits. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong sheet. So one way to view data analytics is a technology that takes unorganized, tangled mass of data, like many organizations that you possess, as illustrated on the left and organizes it for insight and decision making. The leadership of many organizations are not yet aware of the role data analytics can play in achieving value from the data they collect and manage. So data analytics, particularly useful technology for any organization that wants to move toward data driven decision making. So it might be worthwhile spending a moment to recognize what the opposite is of data driven decision making, and we call it hip shooting. We observe that more than enough in many industries, and I won't ask for a show of hands of those who are observing that in their organization. So here's what we're going to cover in this particular topic. We're going to talk first about business improvement opportunities. We'll discuss the idea that there are really only three types of business improvement opportunities, that, and they exist in every organization. So there's lots of opportunity to apply this technology. And we're going to talk about how data analytics delivers business benefits. And then we're going to wrap up with some recommendations that you can use in uh, your organization. So our learning objectives here are to understand how data analytics supports the achievement of business benefits. Data analytics helps us to analyze a large volume of data that can't be analyzed with prior iterations of technology, and it certainly can't be done manually. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how data analytics overcomes Excel limitations. We're all drowning in spreadsheets as a way to manage, analyze, and present data. You've likely heard the limitations of spreadsheets. They aren't a data management tool, but they're often used as such. They impose significant constraints in data volume. And they're subject to software bugs that are difficult to identify and correct. And they're quite primitive as a presentation vehicle. And instead of using boring or overwhelming spreadsheets, we can visualize the historical, current, and predictive data to communicate our message more effectively. And then our th third learning objective today is to understand how data analytics supports business case, business use cases. The key advantage of data analytics for all industries is that the technology helps us integrate data from multiple data sources at the same time easily. It's the act of bringing data together that often reveals useful insights. Now, we're, we're probably aware that data volumes are growing every year and they're growing exponentially. Uh, perhaps this cartoon showing a data flood is more indicative of what organizations are struggling with. Big data is the in vogue term being used to describe this phenomena. Data analytics is an important related technology that makes sense of all of this data. 
So this world GDP chart is relevant because we find that the data that's being generated by mankind actually uh, is following this similar curve. Let's look at business process improvement opportunities. Data analytics are a tool that organizations use to deliver business value. Data analytics delivers value first by helping to identify business improvement opportunities, and then data analytics continues to deliver value by monitoring how that those business improvements have been implemented and how they are performing. So here are the short list of business improvement opportunities. And our view is that there's really only three types of business improvement opportunities. First, we can increase net revenue. In retail, revenue means maximizing revenue through increased total sales or increased unit sales per store or per square meter. In manufacturing, revenue means increasing total units sold. In distribution, revenue means moving more products through the warehouse. Reduce cost. In many industries, cost means reducing operating costs like material, labor, and head office GNA. And the third one is about advancing strategy. It refers to understanding and responding to competitive threats, monitoring technology developments, and then evaluating acquisitions and divestitures. If you can't map your data analytics project proposal to at least one of these opportunities, your pitch is unlikely to resonate with your executives. Data analytics supports all three categories of opportunities. Let's look at some related examples. So here's an example of increasing net revenue in the oil and gas industry. This chart illustrates uh, net revenue by a series of different uh, wells from the best performing to the worst performing wells over time from completion. So from the best horizontally drilled and fracked well to the worst, there's a four times difference in net revenue. Well, if you see a chart like this, you start to think, well, we don't want to be on the bottom. What do we have to do to get on the top of this chart? And those are your business prop process opportunities. Now, in these these curves, of course, after four or five years, they converge, but there's still a two to one improvement in net revenue for the best performer over the worst performer. So lots of opportunities for improvement exist here. Let's look at a revenue forecast dashboard, something like this. These are the analytics that tell you what products are selling in which regions, plus an assortment of what's in the sales pipeline as the sales department develops new business. Now, if we want to look at reducing costs, here we have an example of lease operating expenses and what are the major elements of cost and how are they comparing and trending against budget. Manufacturing operations dashboard shows the performance of many variables that determine superior or problematic manufacturing operations. Total production in units, active machines, sales revenue per shift, breakdowns for the first shift, waste produced by the shift, KPIs, key, key metrics like expenses, manpower, energy, recoverables, how much rejected products, either damaged, defective, or another category. So what can you do to advance strategy? How does data analytics help there? You can evaluate how well you're advancing your business strategy. You, the goal of data analytics here typically is to figure out how to acquire more customers, how to build market share, how to understand where you're falling down in customer service so that you can improve. Financial performance dashboard shows you what's happening in terms of cash, accounts receivable, inventory turns, the typical financial ratios on the left, and how your uh, assets are hopefully growing over time, and 
a single metric in the top left, in this case, simply revenue and how well you're trending on that. Okay, so let's talk about how data analytics delivers business benefits. I hope this discussion will trigger some ideas that you can explore when you return to the office. First, data analytics creates facts, and you want to be able to move the conversation from fact to facts away from gut feel and rumor. So if you want to identify and rank investment opportunities, what do you need to know about there? You want to know about competitor and supplier acquisition, geographic expansion, product line extensions, new products. If you want to build your understanding of risk, you're probably interested in topics like product price risk, supply chain risk, distribution and sales channel risk, weather risk, political risks. And if you want to enable operational excellence, you want to improve how your root cause analysis of problems is working, identify operating cost reduction opportunities, quality improvement opportunities, and employee development opportunities. So if you're thinking about how do I create more facts in my company? I think those are the topics to think about. So let's look at that in a little more detail. What can we do if we want to deliver business benefits with an internal focus? Well, first of all, you want to better understand your KPIs. You know, our, you know, want to be able to analyze the data when the KPIs are surprising you. And by surprise, I mean doing very well unexpectedly or more commonly or more urgently if they're going badly. For example, changes in production per day or per month or material changes in sales amounts by month, by product line or geographic region. You might want to better understand what's happening in your business. And what I mean by that is why sales or margins or product returns are trending up or down. For example, changes in oil price due to production curtailment or changes in transportation costs. You want to be able to empower your workforce to make better decisions. That means you have to put data in their hands. When to recommend plant maintenance and outage, when to recommend a change in financial accrual practice, for example. If you want to solve a specific business problem in your industry, why is some production machinery wearing out more quickly than others? Where to improve or discontinue the use of an external service like trucking maintenance or specialized cleaning? Uncover hidden insights in your data. For example, everyone thinks that they approximately understand production costs, but an in-depth analysis often reveals some unexpected results. You want to support a large strategic decision, such as a major geographic or supplier acquisition decision. For example, whether you're going to have increase a whole new pro sorry. regulatory requirements or implemented forecast balance sheet impact of the next round of IFRS, if you're interested in that, and embed analytics in operational apps. So moving beyond viewing data analytics as a new or powerful application. So you want to embed the data analytics functionality right in the menu of existing applications such as inventory management or financial reporting. Perhaps the most important conclusion we can draw from the list is how widely applicable data analytics is to every business function, every business process that you're working on. So here's another view. This is a, a graphic view of how well you're doing. There's a large list of metrics here, such as reporting, business decisions, data quality, employee satisfaction, operational efficiency, and then how well you're doing by some kind of a metric that's either survey or 
other types of data gathering. So maybe this will give you an idea of how to implement data analytics and monitor the health of your organization. Now, the previous slide was about an internal focus. Increasingly, we're seeing data analytics take on an external focus. And to achieve that, you probably need to bring in some external data sources as well. And some organizations are convinced that data analytics delivers more value if it's externally implied. So the most obvious one is to ensure that your customers are receiving value. Perhaps you do that through competitor analysis, perhaps you do that through customer satisfaction surveys and ret or product returns. Sometimes you can uh, offer customers apps and you can see many organizations now offer their customers apps, but in terms of data analytics, you need to understand what the activity and the use of that app is telling you. For example, if you allow customers to visualize themselves wearing or using your products, perhaps over time and not just in a point in time, uh, help customers see trends in their order progress, shipping, performance. Uh, you've seen the example apps of flight status, credit, credit scores, personal finance performance. Offering analytics on external portals for suppliers helps them understand what's happening in your organization so they can better serve you. Uh, allow suppliers to see trends in their invoice approvals, for example, or see production plans or inventory levels. Uh, benchmark your company KPIs against your competitors. You may be able to find enough data uh, out there to get a good sense of what your competitors are doing. And then you want to visualize external data. For example, the most obvious one is stock market indices relative to your company's performance. There often are specific stock prices you're interested in. Everyone's interested in interest rates, maybe even weather or commodity prices for commodities that affect your business. And again, the, what this list shows you is how to improve customer focus and customer service through the data analytics uh, that may be available to you. So how does it work in Dilbert land? I collected optimistic customer data, placed it in the context of shaky industry data, and seasoned it with a fantasy acquisition estimate. <coughs> Added herd in instinct, a pinch of price bias, and here's your operating plan. Just add leadership. Why do I always get the hard part? As always, the boss misunderstands and struggles to fill, fulfill his ma management role. Data analytics helps improve the defensibility of your decisions and avoid ridiculous hip shooting that we've all observed. Hip shooting generally results in a significant overinvestment of capital, followed later by dis disappointing profitability. So how much hip shooting is going on in your organization? I'll let you think about that without raising your hand. Okay, so what are the conclusions we can derive from this? Um, we have various data stores to organize our data, and we data analytics software is about summarizing vast volumes of data. But without this ability to organize it, it's not, or summarize it, it's not going to deliver value. And we call this business the matter of data of big, whoops, sorry. So what we're interested in really is sifting out important insights in this data, and that should be the focus of our data analytics development work. And data analytics software is more formal and that, and rigorous in the way that it goes about its calculation that makes it vastly superior to Excel. Overall, data analytics supports the move to a more data-driven organization. So what we need to do is communicate the benefits of data analytics among our clients or within our companies. And we can use data visualizations like the ones I've shown you to illustrate 
that and meaningfully communicate it. We can use the data analytics software to improve the communication, increase return on assets, and reduce the risk of unprofitable investments in all facets of our business. So let's think about some questions here that might be relevant to our situation. What are the type of business improvement opportunities that we've discussed? Well, there's three of them, increase net revenue, reduce costs, advance the strategy. And what functions of a business can data analytics provide value? Well, the short answer is all of them. It doesn't matter whether it's marketing, R&D, operations, logistics, customer service, financial analysis, and reporting human resources, there's a place for data analytics. Uh, an opportunity to apply data analytics in your immediate area. There's probably some opportunities to develop KPIs, be it monthly, quarterly, or annual. There's variance reporting, uh, financial or production volume or distribution volume. It doesn't really matter what part of the organization you are in, there's probably an opportunity to imply, apply data analytics, be it in engineering, uh, in operating costs, in vendor spend analysis, market share analysis, profit, product profitability analysis, uh, competitive analysis, lots of opportunities to do that. Does it work in data land? I don't, in, in Dilbert land, I don't have an accurate acquisition dollar recommendation, so I just made up this one. Studies have shown that accurate numbers aren't any more useful than the ones you make up. How many studies have showed that? 87. <laughs> so, as always, Dilbert and his friends misunderstand realities. Made up numbers or guessing never pays off. With data analytics, we can reduce the risk of acquiring asset at an unjustified premium or with an intrinsic risk that's poorly understood. Uh, has your company paid too much for an acquisition? And again, we don't want to. 